Hello, this is Alkesh again. Um, before we move on to the aircraft, um, there are a couple of things I changed. Um, uh, first of all, I cleaned up my uh, uh, my comp here a little bit, but uh, more importantly, uh, in that cleanup process, I now am down to two FBX files, making up the uh, the entire city. And here is the entire city, and then I have created a small uh, group of buildings. Um, if I just take this uh, catcher out, you can see which buildings they are. Um, I did that because these were the buildings where I, you could visibly see all the spilling of texture onto the other buildings in the back. Remember, um, I think in the third video I talked, or the second video I talked about how the camera is moving and at the end of the film uh, you see that uh, some of the buildings are casting um, texture onto the geometry behind the buildings. So what I did basically is I identified the ones that were visibly uh, compromising the uh, the entire shot and I created a separate group and that separate group is going into this um, FBX. Now this catcher node here it says and that's the another thing I wanted to talk about um, the projector ID here is important. It says pro projector ID number two. So basically what I have done is I have paired this catcher with one of the two projectors. So this one here, uh, it says ID one, and this one here must say ID two, right? So one is the one where I am erasing all the um, spillage, um, and two, is the one that is casting uh, images on this geometry. So just to highlight that it's important that you pair projector and the um, the recipient of the projector which is this catcher node. Uh, here it says uh, projector ID 2 and here it will say projector ID 1. I was getting some errors uh, in the previous uh, attempt so I just thought I'd quickly talk about that because it's something I learned. Alright, so from here we're going to go over to the aircraft, but before we do that, let me just uh, show you the final comp, because I have made a lot of modifications to the aircraft from the one that you saw in the um, introductory uh, video. So what I have done is created a model that uh, uh, closely matches the model of the aircraft uh, Airbus A frame, I think 320, the model. So here we go first. Um, you can see it's textured now with all the right colors uh, or colors that are close to right colors. There's a proper set of windows. Um, it has some doors here you can't see. I'll pause it and certainly you will see inside the ma inside Maya. Um, you have the light here that's flashing. And there's also a geometry up at the top where the light is flashing the red geometry which is the light bulb itself. So, um, and also you see the smoke is different, fire is different this time. But everything else is the same, except for the cleanup that I talked about in some of the buildings here. Uh, it's still the same environment that we talked through last time. It has the, still the same um, 3D uh, effect, which is the uh, 3D uh, fog that we had talked about. It's still still the same. I haven't changed anything. But the aircraft was the one that I want to talk about uh, in this uh, video. So I just thought I'd start with the final comp. Alright, so let me just pause here and show you what I mean by the door. You see the door here that is uh, uh, indented uh, and that's bump map basically. It's not a separate geometry. We are going to do more of that because you see the the wing here is quite flat. In reality you would have some flaps here that would open up when the plane is uh, landing. So we'll create those because we are not going to animate them or separate them from the wing. We'll just need to have the bump map method here to show that there is a panel here that could open up. So we'll take care of that in Fusion, by the way. Um, there's a lot of a uh, lot of last-minute modeling that I have done inside of Fusion uh, in this particular uh, comp. I I think it's great that Fusion is. Uh, you know, giving you that flexibility to, uh, to take care of a lot of those things, um, you know, in the FBX model itself, uh, through texturing, obviously. 
All right, so let's go and take a look at the aircraft. But before we do that here in Fusion, we want to see it in Maya. So let me bring up Maya. Here is Maya. Now this aircraft is um, Polygon, um, and it's built based on the orthographic images. So I found these on the internet. You have the side view here, or the side view here, and you see the image. Um, let me just uh, right. So you just look at the image first. Here's the side view. Here's the front view, and here's the top view. And I just started building geometry or blocking these images by uh, taking down cube or you know whatever geometry was appropriate for that shape. All right. So let's bring that up. And there's nothing fancy about this model. It's just like any other polygonal model that you would build. It's much simple. I haven't created the wheels and the structure that supports the wheels. Although I am tempted to finish that because while I was building this, I had another idea of doing a uh, composition of landing this aircraft onto a runway. So um, I'm going to take a uh, either a video or a picture of a runway, and then we'll you know make some animation to the camera, and this aircraft will land. So for that, I will definitely need realistic looking wheels and the structure so we'll come back to that uh, you can see here there are no windows I mean we can do windows inside of fusion if you feel like but we're not seeing that part of the aircraft anyway so it doesn't really matter the shot is from the back right so that one thing I did in Maya just the modeling and the other thing is the UV whole aircraft and bring up UV textures um, this is the hull front of the aircraft the rear of the aircraft. I didn't uh, um, further split this uh, UVs into uh, two parts, left and the right. The wings, I haven't separated top and the bottom. Um, the flaps, uh, the left and the right and the top. Uh, this is the belly of the aircraft for lack of better word, I guess. This is the one that uh, supports the, this part of the aircraft if the aircraft was pointing down. These two are the engines and some of the support structures around the wings. So very simple layout and I use this layout to uh, texture or create texture inside Photoshop and then brought the Photoshop file in Fusion to finish the uh, bump map and everything. Okay so uh, that's all about Maya and let's go over to Fusion now. Right. So here we are. Um, the aircraft itself is here. Same aircraft that you saw in uh, um, Maya. It's just an FBX model. It's sitting exactly where the Maya file was sitting. Um, there's no no change at all. So um, let me just focus so I can rotate around it properly. Um, you see the bump maps already. Um, you see the bump map that is giving you illusion that there is a uh, an indent here. Uh, also the windows, and, and you will be able to see it when I remove the texture file later on. Um, but here first about the animation. When I was planning this animation, um, I was thinking uh, that one way to do it would be animate the aircraft and then animate everything else that you have, such as the light. You have the light at the top here and um, the, the flashing. Um, you can animate separately all these uh, particles and then somehow connect those particles to the aircraft by using expression so that the uh, motion of these particles would match the motion of the aircraft. Um, that's certainly one way and, and quite valid way of doing it and, and I'm sure there are many other ways uh, far more simpler but the one that I was shooting for um, actually came from the idea uh, of group nodes in uh, Maya. So in Maya you have group uh, nodes where you have a geometry, a geometry, some other things and then you can group them together and you can move the group around rather than moving individual parts. So um, how about if we try to use that here and there are no group nodes but you have merge nodes so this 3D merge, if you think of that as a group, 
basically it does have a collection of these items so all I need is the transformation capabilities for this merge node which you already have right so you know that this merge node exists at this particular coordinates so that was good so then how about if we just use the coordinates to move scene around and I did that here so let me split this into two view two viewports and bring this one here while we are looking at this local space which is this we'll look at this space which is call it the global space now in global space aircraft does not exist at the origin so what I did is I actually animated this global space and you can see there are all different values here and this is what is moving the aircraft now this is what I mean let's focus on this merge node in this viewport okay so I don't need the light here so you see that aircraft is not at origin like it is here even though aircraft itself is not moving you will see the motion here as soon as I play now what's happening is there is a local space here that is static but then there is another global space that I created by using the coordinate system of this particular merge node which is responsible for moving the entire space so it's sort of like you know we the people are bouncing around walking around flying whatever we are doing on this planet earth and the planet earth itself as a part of the solar system is moving right so you have two distinct space in fusion that you can work with and this is similar to what how you would have done in or how I would have done maybe you know in uh, Maya all right so that's great I have these um, animation going on here so all I need now is the same space creation for all my particles and just to illustrate that I have created this uh, temporary merge node let me take this merge into this merge here and take this particles the first particles which has the rendering it's a 3d particle I can show you how it looks so you have the 3d particle here uh, there's a 3d particle rendering because you need that and then I have used a duplicate node to create a duplication of this particle emitter onto the other side so here you see that now the particles are on both sides so these particles and imagine that this is an aircraft here in the um, in the middle so that's what I want to illustrate So if I take this duplicate node and put it inside of this merge and then look at it so now you see how these things are um, showing up in the local space now all I need is to move this both spaces the way this aircraft is moving this this local space is moving in this global space so for that I created a merge node here that has exactly the same animation going on that you have for the aircraft and that's how I basically merge them together now if you look at um, if you look at this space here you can see that aircraft was here because it's it coming from the different merge um, but then you can see that uh, the particles are moving along with it and I did that exact same technique with all of the um, particles so we'll go into the other particles but this is where I'll stop I'm running out of time and uh, we'll go from here in the next video thanks a lot